Welcome everyone to our newest video. We are the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Ophir Boulay. And in today's video, we are going to talk about how to play staccato. In order to develop a proper staccato technique, what you're going to need is a hot stove and a metronome. But we always recommend that before you use the metronome, you need to make yourself comfortable with the stove. You need to work without the metronome because that puts additional pressure on you. Now the first step is to make the stove hot. Yeah, and make sure that you are generous. Make it really, really hot. Wait long enough for it to have been hot. Make sure the surface is hot and then we can get started. Now, the first thing you have to do, probably you'd guess, is just touch the stove like this. And look, that's exactly... I don't even need to explain to you how to do the movement. You're going to do the movement straight away in the most perfect way. It comes instinctual. One little tip, if while you're doing the exercise, you happen to feel and smell burnt meat, that means that's an indication that you are way too slow. So you need to speed up. After you've been doing this for a couple of days or weeks, we're sure that you will have the proper staccato technique. Merry Christmas and enjoy staccatoing. Now, before we continue with the video, a little something for all our young students and all the young people out there who are not our students. This was a joke. Don't try this at home, don't make the stove hot and touch it. Don't do that. And to the adults, of course, who were considering, even for a moment, trying this with the stove in order to improve your staccato, we absolutely admire your dedication. Now, joking aside, the example we gave with the hot stove actually does very closely resemble the technique you need for staccato playing. Absolutely, because very often when I speak to our younger, and older students, I always give this example. If you want to know how exactly you have to move when you do a staccato, you have to imagine that basically the movement is, instead of downward, it's actually upward movement instead of this. This is not a great staccato. This is great staccato. So the movement is actually upwards. Like if you imagine exactly burning yourself somewhere, you are never going to push down, right? You are always going to move up in reaction to the heat on your finger. So it's it was always one of my favorite examples when I have to teach staccato. Just imagine burning yourself on something hot. Now, the best thing to do is, perhaps Elvira would like to start with this, is what is actually the wrong way to do staccato. I think it's we have to approach because you we will show you you already know what would be the right way and we'll demonstrate it on the piano but let's start first with what's the wrong approach and yeah well what we see very often i would say most uh people naturally exactly like dimitar said do a downward movement so they just kind of sink into the piano and you see that you get in compared to what staccato is supposed to be you actually get a very dull kind of, kind of sound. A sound that's heavy, a sound that's more, it's louder than you would like it to be because staccato has to be crisp, it has to be light, it has to be very short, like this, and not... When you push down, you will not be able to control the crispness of the sound. And so we very often see a downward movement which actually closes the sound and kind of makes your finger get stuck on the key in, in certain way instead of actually releasing the tension and springing off the key. So a staccato, a kind of wrong staccato, what we see very often, scale would be sounding... which not only sounds ugly and is not actually as short as staccato is supposed to be, but it also makes your hand stiff. Uh, which is a, a side effect you don't want. So we would want the upward movement, springy, short, and light. And you immediately s uh, hear the difference in sound. So that would be one of the biggest mistakes and actually the biggest flaw you can have when you have staccato. Pressing downwards and also the other is from very high. Pressing this because you don't perhaps hear that, but when you do that very often, when we play piano, you hear this sound of your finger hitting the key. You want to avoid that. You don't want to hear that so much. You want to hear just the sound of the piano instead of also the sound mixed with an unpleasant noise. So the first thing to keep in mind would be to think differently about staccato. Think 
upwards instead of downwards. And the second thing would be exactly not from above, but already have your finger prepared on the key before you jump upwards. So there are two different movements. You have the finger prepared on the key and then you uh, jump upwards. You don't do it from afar and then jump upwards. Exactly, that brings us to the next point, what would be the right approach. Mm -hmm. So the first approach was pressing. You don't want to be pressing the key. You want to spring, in, you want to be springing off the key. Now, the perfect way also to imagine doing staccato is exactly what just Elvira mentioned. So we kind of mixed now the two. Mm -hmm. the, the perfect thing is to have contact with the key before you spring up. Right? That's in a way like you touch the key because in order to touch the stove, the hot stove, you need to touch it first in order to recoil in, in pain, right? So the same is with the key. You want to touch the key and then you jump, you jump up. And somehow, of course, you're going to have some pressing movement, but it's barely perceptible because the main movement is pressing and then, and then withdrawing from the key. So that will be the right staccato technique touching the key and playing like this. So you know the wrong approach, you know the right approach. Now with the right approach, you have to remember, there is one danger that I've seen, a lot of our students, what I've seen from them is they get, they get it immediately because it's very easy to get this feeling of jumping from, from being, from feeling something hot. So they get the feeling immediately, but their mistake, one of the most common mistake, is that if there is a piece, and the piece is something like this, for example, for example, and then I, I tell them, like, let's do it very slowly, so each note can be completely with the, can be fully with the right technique. So they start very well, and then they speed up. So that's the biggest mistake you can make, because if you speed up, you will lose this contact with the key and then withdrawing. So you will speed up and you will start again going downwards and your staccato, I hear two or three notes that are perfect. Then the speed kicks in, they can't reproduce the same movement and then the staccato is ruined. So most of the time people make the mistake to speed up. They just want quick results, which doesn't work. So that's, that's the mistake you can make to get just two or three notes well and then to speed up and ruin your technique. Record yourself, put a little camera, put your phone, everybody has good phones nowadays that can record video. Just put the phone next to the piano, look at your technique. Are you touching the keyboard? Are you touching the key before you actually spring off it? So that's one thing. Then I, we would recommend as always, do it without a metronome <laughs> on the stove without a metronome. <laughs> do it on the piano without a metronome at first very slowly, and if you can't contain yourself, put the metronome on extremely, on an extremely slow tempo, so the metronome can keep you in check, that you are really slow. We would recommend that. Start very slow, make sure, maybe even do something like, touch, spring, touch, spring, touch, spring because you would remember right we we talk very often with Elvira to our students about naming notes for example when they're beginners or whatever saying something out loud can help you a lot to keep you in check that you are in a comfortable slow tempo so you can observe everything you're doing absolutely yeah and once you get the technique of course you're going to speed up but make sure that you're just being really precise get the right technique and you'll see how nice your staccato is going to sound well, that was all for this video. Don't forget to, if you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe, help us grow our channel. Don't also forget to hit that like button. And uh, don't forget, we are also on Instagram. You can follow us there. We upload very regularly our playing also, if you're curious. Uh, we're also on Facebook and on TikTok. Yeah, so whichever platform you use, just join us there. Also here on YouTube, you can click the notification bell in this way. If you want to follow our videos, YouTube will always give you a notification when we have, whenever we upload a new video. For us, recording this video, as always, was a great pleasure. Thank you so much for watching and Merry Christmas. You need to work without the metronome because that puts additional pressure on you. <laughs> if you happen to feel and smell burnt meat, that means that you are way too slow, so you need to speed up.